Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of the Elden Ring series. And in today's episode, I think we're going to be fast traveling to the Warmaster's Shack. If we look at the map here, to the east of the Warmaster's Shack is a bridge, and across that bridge is a merchant who has a cracked pot, and I want all the cracked pots. So, off we go. Did I? Yeah, I think I already fought the boss in here, so we'll be going on the back of our dog, and then heading straight east. Uh, if I remember correctly, there is some sort of encampment here. Yes, there is. Well, let's pick a fight with him, I guess. Might as well. I've got the time, the levels, got a new weapon. Roger's rapier is like noticeably longer than the, <laughs> than the other one. It's like easily a 30% increase in range. Pretty intense. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly difficult about this encampment, just watch out for archers and the like. For the most part though, it seems like you can just trance through here. This is earlier in the game after all. Just be mindful of your surroundings, unless you want to get attacked by dogs like I just did. Oh no, my guard is broken, what am I gonna do? <laughs> what if I use barricade shield? Oh yeah, <laughs> he can't. <laughs> I love it, it didn't do that before. The last time I played the game and used Barricade Shield, they didn't bounce off of your shield when you used it. Of course, it seems like they heavily nerfed the amount of guard boost that the skill gives you, which is too bad. That was great. Let's go ahead and grab the Beast Crest Heater Shield. How good is that one? Five less guard boost, but it weighs quite a few less pounds. It's good if you're into that kind of thing, but my goal is absolutely to maximize the guard boost over everything. Uh, we are going to come up onto this building thing is that a, is that an enemy that I just passed by what are you doing silly goose uh, if i remember correctly the way to get up there we have to run back toward the front of the encampment we're gonna come up here to the right on this cliff trying to avoid any unnecessary fights yeah here we are now we can come up to the top of the cliff and jump down onto this building and this should be bird dead bird spear or a lance this could be used for this build as well if you would prefer to have something with well a lot more range this is the first great spear that you can get in the game and it is great indeed it's <laughs> it's very long and it hits like a truck however it will consume a lot of stamina i can at least give an example of that let's go find an enemy and piss them off real quick hey, what's up buddy Okay, we're in combat now. Okay, so... Wait, wait that actually wasn't that bad. Oh, it's really not that much worse than the rapier, surprisingly. Huh, how much was that hitting for? <laughs> Maybe I'll specialize in this. Let's grab this skull. Oh, here's a dog. 96, it's doing the same damage as the Rogier rapier, and it does more poise. What? What was that? I heard bells. Why did I hear bells? What? What? What, what the? Oh! It's like a little... I don't know, like an alarm system right here with bells. That's cool. I guess if you come from this direction, you'll piss off the entire camp. Well, now I want to upgrade this lance. Well, I bet there's better great spears, so we'll just stick with the rapier for now. Rogier's rapier. It'll be better for bleeding anyway. Let's come up here to the right side of this cliff. And, ah, we have the pot man. Well, he's basically asking us to beat his ass, so we're gonna. I don't know if it'll work with Roger's rapier. We'll use the shield. Just keep doing charged heavies on his back end. Bada bing, bada boop. We rip some pot out of the ground. Exposition, exposition, blah, 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 free stuff. All right, see you later, nerd. Now we do have some options. If we wanted to, we could kill Pot Man right now for a pretty good accessory. One that will increase the damage of your Ashes of War. So, like this bloody slash, that would do, I think, 10% more damage with the accessory. But... I'm not running a build that needs Ashes of War. If you are using those a lot though, if you are using the Stormblade or the Troll's Roar, then feel free to murderate the pot man right now and use his accessory. It can be good if you're built for it. Let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. We're gonna hug this wall to the left here. Just keep following the wall. And here we are. Yeah, that's the place. I want to get some of the Grave Glove Warts, so I'm going to do a catacomb. Generally, these catacombs with the big doors and the, well, catacombs look. And when you walk into them, they'll say that. Catacomb somewhere in the name. Most of them, at least. These are where you get the Glove Warts for upgrading your Spirit Ashes. At some point, we may actually use those. Right now, however, probably not. I summoned them at the end of Godric just for the purpose of feeding my dogs. Something that might not be a terrible idea if you're coming into the catacombs is 
replacing your Ash of War with something that gives your weapon holy damage. This sacred affinity is your goal. We will be losing the bleeding, and our damage is being split between two types, which is never a good thing. However, when we come across undead, it should kill them immediately. I'll show you what I mean. Here we have a skeleton. I'm gonna beat him to death with my shield first. Should be able to just mash on him. <laughs> Yeah. So he falls apart and he becomes this glowing pile. But if we do that with the rapier, normally we would have to strike him while he's down to finish him off. Otherwise he'll keep reviving. But instead, if we kill them with the rapier, because it has holy, it actually did nothing. Why did it do nothing? What? Wait. What? Huh? Now I'm confused. I don't know why, but it didn't it didn't kill them. That's not normal. Well, I guess we'll just head down these stairs and to the right. Skeletons are easy enough to handle, especially at this point. We are very strong. <laughs> we don't need to be anywhere near as strong as we are right now for this point in the game. The trick really is to just kill them like any other enemy. Make sure they're all down first so you don't get sneak attacked. And aim your camera down and step. So we come down these stairs and underneath them, we'll go through this nice little corridor. I think there will be two more skeletons in here. Let's see. Let's grab this glove ward at the end. Yeah, two of them. Knock this one down. Then work on this one. Oh, it's off by one. Stab the other one on the ground and then come back for the second one. My personal suggestion would be to knock all of them down before going to stab their bodies so you can reduce the amount of damage you take. We've entered a new room. Let's grab this Uchigatana. Try to stab this archer skeleton. If I can't, he <laughs> went to a really weird place. That was another one. Relax, buddy. There we go. Watch out with these archer skeletons. They can, in fact, just take an arrow out and stab you. Like, they, they just put it in their hand and thrust like it's a wrap here. Do bad the player can't do that. It'd be nice. Make a fun bow playthrough. Arrow only. Yeah, one more archer. Let's go ahead and remove him from his not life. Uh, we're going to come down here and get ready to deal with some skeletons. We might get attacked by three or so at a time, I think. We have one here. Yeah, we'll just take him out while the other is rising. There's one more over there, but he's not approaching, so we'll kill this one. And there's one to our side. As long as you stay behind the shield, you will be just fine. Worst case scenario, they get a couple hits in, and you'll still be fine. Because tank build. Anything in here to the sides? Yeah. Blood Rose. Eh, probably won't use it. Gonna grab this. Brave Violet. And pull the lever, Kronk. Turn back around and get ready because there's going to be a few more. Now they're right next to each other. If we wanted to, we could just uh, use a fire bomb. And <laughs> Obviously you don't have to do that, but at the end of the last episode, I farmed the crap <laughs> out, of, out of all the fire bomb recipe stuff. Smoldering butterflies and mushrooms all at one bonfire. At the cost of 10 minutes of my time, I basically now have infinite of them. I guess the skeletons can drop mushrooms. Neat. Oh, one more grave glove wart. And that lever that we pulled at the end of this little tight raid opened up a door right here. And this is the boss. Let's go ahead and touch this statue. If you're running in not offline mode, these statues will give you access to player sides. They'll probably be littering the floor here. You can summon in other people who have dropped their sign who are just looking to help because they can. Sun bros. But we're running offline mode so that we can't cheese anything by summoning other people. Let's go ahead and get ready to fight this boss. Always start with the flask and I guess craft the rest of these pots. I did use a few. And here we go. It's a mostly beaten up black knife assassin. This boss will be very easily managed with the sword and board thing because they don't do much stamina damage. They don't do much damage damage either. If we just had a big two-handed weapon, we could just trade blows with it. The only downside is that it's a dark room and they like to jump backwards like this. I believe there's a grab that these things can do, but I'm not too worried about it. It wouldn't do enough to kill us anyway. Try a fireball. What's the damage like there? Oh, um, you know, an amount. That was good. Firebomb did the equivalent of about three rapier stabs. I think he hit me twice while I was throwing it too, so I just <laughs> poised through that. And we got a death root. Neat. We're not going to use it in this playthrough as far as I know, but 
Good to have. Grab this resin in the corner. I guess I'll get this one too. Just like when we cleared that cave in one of the, I think the first episode, or the second, I'm not sure. Once you beat the boss, there will be a nice blue glowy, I don't know, thing here. You can interact with it to return to the entrance of the dungeon. Catacombs. Whatever you feel like calling it. It's a dungeon. I'm gonna run back in just a little bit so that I can touch grass. For some reason when you interact with those blue things, it doesn't give you all your health and estus back. It just puts you back at the beginning. And we're gonna go back to the right outside the entrance and then down this path. That's the cliff where we fought, well not fought, helped pot man. And if we keep coming down this way, we get a sight of grace, which of course we're going to interact with. Suppose we'll take the time to murderate this pumpkin head too. Might as well. Free sanctuary stones that we'll never use. <laughs> that didn't do any damage, it just knocked me over. Now I can just wail on this thing. He doesn't care. Oh, he was starting to move at the end there, but dude really gave up on life there. Sanctuary stone? It's not terrible, I guess. It's got its uses. Let's go back over this way. Smithing stone. Continue to cross the bridge and to the right, there should be a merchant. All of this was so that I could get another fire pot from this guy. Purchase. Fire pot? What crafting does he have? Turtleneck poison stuff? Sure, we'll take it. Why not? Since we're here, let's go fight a boss. Let's continue to head, well, from the bridge. Follow this neat little path. You don't have to acknowledge anything here. Wait, is that guy dead? Hold on. Why is there a dead man here? Oh well. Thought there was usually an NPC there, but I probably just accidentally passed a portion of the story or something by going into Kaelid earlier. Or Liurnia. If we keep following this path, we'll come across yet another grace. I know, back to back. We'll rest at this one just because I think there's undead back there where that corpse was. And I don't want them following me into the boss fight. Also, I can take this golden vow off of my rapier now. I don't think the bleed is going to help me in this fight, but that's fine. Probably stick with it anyway. Just keep it simple. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Now if we look in the distance, following this path down even more, you can see a man on a boat. The Mr. Boatman is basically going to summon a bunch of enemies, which are the real boss of this fight, because he himself is not dangerous at all. We are just going to aggressively stab the crap out of him if he doesn't disappear the second we get close to him. Did he end up behind us? Yes, he did. All right, buddy. Stabbing time. Do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and summon the wolves just to... Oh, I'm gonna... Ouch. Yup. All right. Those should distract the undead for a little bit. <laughs> Trying to stab from the side of the horse here. I mean, we already got him down about a quarter, so it's working. Ouch. Let's go and hit him with some fire pots. Actually, let's hit the undead with fire pots. Yeah. Well, most of them are down anyway. Now, if we hit him with a fire pot, how good is that going to do? Ooh, look at that chunk. 240-something? Let's just go through all of them. This is why we use the items. They're actually really good in this game. Oh, oh he teleported away. I can't craft anymore. Where did he go? Yeah, boatman, boatman. There he is, summoning more things. Throw my last fire pot at him, miss. Get back to stabbing. Oh, he's going up. Just back up whenever he does this. It's really not dangerous. Dangerous part is the bunches of undead that he summons. See, he just hit my horse and barely did anything. But if we just keep walking around him, it confuses the undead and him. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know why the undead aren't attacking me. This is actually a like a bug or something. I'm just gonna <laughs> just, just keep keep going. Ouch, ouch. Get a combo. Hope I don't get knocked off the horse. Oh, and it's over. Yay. Just stab Boatman until he is dead. It's a very simple fight. There's no crazy tricks. I mean the fire pots help a little bit. This is why I'm getting more cracked pots. That's why I farmed for the resources. It's worth it. Every time. Grab this. So we came from that way, that path. And we're going to be going straight through and to the right a little bit. Just over here. Here we have Turtle Land. Gonna use a stone sword key here. Turtle Land, where all your turtle dreams come true. Once that fog gate is removed, you can come in here and, if you so desire, you can murder a bunch of turtles for their neck meat, like you do. But the reason we came down here is so that we can lift that door and grab the accessory inside this chest. Now, I'm not going to equip this right now, but eventually I may. What we just got is the green turtle talisman. This is highly valuable for every build. Just about. Even mages. You can run out of stamina very quickly casting mage spells. But what this does is increase your stamina recovery speed. And not many items in the game do that. If you mix that accessory, the 
green turtle talisman with the rate turtle shell, you get a truly ludicrous stamina recovery. If you add in the pickled turtleneck, which you can get all of the resources for this right here, where we just got this accessory, by farming the turtles for turtleneck meat, the row of fruits are literally everywhere, and the herba, well, those aren't too uncommon either, usually at the entrances of caves near bonfires or sites of grace. But we're going to continue down this way, toward the golden tree, and slightly to the left. Getting oh so much closer. Once we get near this church, we're going to be forced to dismount our dog, because there's going to be an NPC invader. Just gonna run through here, ignore the invader for the most part, grab these items, and touch grass. Now you can rest to the grace immediately to get the NPC to go away, but as soon as they start fighting you, well, then you can't. You can handle this NPC like you do with everything else in the game. That is to hide behind your shield and stab it to death. It is just so good. Whoopsie daisy, stabbed in the back. Oh, my guard is broken. Good thing the NPCs don't capitalize properly. There it is again, that jump attack hits hard. Got it, don't block that. If this was an actual player, I'd be dead already. Maybe, if they could even do enough damage. Sacred Scorpion Charm, and like 4k souls, not bad. Let's see what that charm does. I don't remember. Raise holy attack, but lowers damage negation. By about 9%, roughly. 8 or 9. Not bad. I suppose I should cover the accessory we got from the Black Knife Assassin as well. We got the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Critical hits restore HP. Critical hits being anytime you break someone's guard, parry them, and get the repost there, or if you stab them in the back. The amount of HP it heals, I think is like 5%, which isn't very good. Let's go ahead and level up. One more point to strength. We're slowly getting there. Probably be better to go into vigor first, but whatever. Let's go ahead and exit the church. There's not much more to do here. We're going to come out of the church and head left, somewhat toward the yellow tree. We'll come across a nice little brimstone wall into Kaelid. Truly the most wondrous land of Elden Ring. Grab this nascent butterfly. I'm still not sure what those do. Touch grass. This is one of the few places in the game where we'll just be skipping, <laughs> skipping the vast majority of it. Let's see. There is a shield somewhere in this area that I really want. I don't remember exactly where it is though. The site of grace to our right and the brimstone wall to our left. We're going to start heading down this road. And we're going to follow it pretty directly, ignoring the large batches of zombie dudes. Come up here, around this cliff. Just keep running east. Jump off the cliff. Well, you can fall a surprising amount of height before you start taking any damage. And over to the left here is a site of grace. We might die doing this, but I want the sword that is inside that carriage. So we're just going to run straight at it, rack it open, and get the loot. Don't even worry about the enemies. Rack it open. I'm sure something's aggroing. Ouch. I got the sword, and now we get back on our dog and run. Run, 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 run. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want your strange giant bird dog things. Touch grass. The saving grace. Now that, to the south of this grace, <laughs> yes, I did all of that just for a sword. But hey, it's the guts sword. This is one of the better strength weapons in the game. It's heavy as shit at 23 pounds. The shield we're going to be using is about that weight as well, but it does an insane amount of damage. It's a good weapon, really. Let's check this out to the left. I think there's going to be some dudes who breathe fire. Caleb Ruins. Is this the place I want to be? Might be. Let's jump around here. Ouch, 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 ouch. Ouch. Is that just from standing on the fire? Is there a bunch of butterflies here? Oh, these guys are going to blow. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go ahead and just let them self-destruct like they do. It's right here. I don't usually check everything here. We're moving to this building to the left. Oh, okay. Nope, don't want that. This is what we're looking for. These stairs. <laughs> we're heading down here. We're gonna drink our flask of wondrous physic and pick a fight with the boss. First things first, summon the dogs to distract something. Oh boy. Yes, it's two pumpkin heads and their weapons are on fire. Which is not great. That's why I wanted to summon the dogs. It just makes this so much more manageable. I'm gonna chug. There's only one dog left. I can see it on my screen. But now... There should be only one pumpkin head left. Now we can manage it. Yeah, just one of them is perfectly manageable. 
Especially this one, he's pretty derpy. Now I'm just wailing on him from behind the shield. You can play it safe and just trade blows. So he's about to attack, so I attack. That's the better way to handle the stamina management here, but we're pretty high in stats and levels, so we can just kind of wail on him for the most part. For the most part. There we go. Easy peasy. Double pumpkin heads. Dead. And to be felled. Both of them. Felled over. Behind the door. This is what we want, I doth believe. Yes. The Visage Shield. Now this thing is bulky. Beyond bulky. We look at the stats here. At base, this thing has 75 guard boost. All around better defenses than the brass shield. But it also weighs about 3.5 times more. <laughs> Which is quite a grip. That's why we're investing in endurance. Also, it requires 44 strength, but I thought it required 42. Whoopsie. So we need an insane amount of strength. Or an accessory that can counteract that strength requirement. We have 35 with the Radagon Sword Seal equipped, which means we need 9 more levels before we can use the Visage Shield. That's not even considering the equip load. I think the only way for us to truly upgrade to that is if we unlock the third accessory slot here and look for the Arsenal Charm, which will increase our carry weight. I think that's a sensible goal. Anyways, we're basically done with this area. That's the only thing I wanted. Now let's get out before Fireman starts doing fire things again. We're gonna head to the south. Eventually, we'll meet up with this road here and we can start following it. And to the left of the road, after this second wall of brimstone, will be a site of grace. I will be resting at it to get my one Estus back. Better safe than sorry. And then continue to follow the road south. I actually think we're going to veer off a bit to the left here. If I remember correctly, there should be a mage down here. Am I right about that? I'm not a mage, a merchant. Now I see enemies, so I think I might be wrong. Oh, yeah. Okay, come down here till we meet up with the cliff, and then, avoiding this little batch of enemies to the left here, follow the cliff until we run into this merchant. What is up, my dude? This guy sells a lot of poison stuff, actually. An infinite supply of poison bone darts, poisoned stone, and poison stone clubs. If you want to really whittle away at something, this is the way to do it. This is the guy to talk to. But we're probably not going to mess with that. So, we are going to go straight from the merchant to the west. Like, perfectly west. You can see in the distance there, there's another grace. We're going to grab that. Is that a castle? I don't remember which castle that is. Is that Radon? No. What is that castle? Now I'm curious. Very curious. Let's go check it out. I don't remember this one. Seems we're going to have to go to the right, then up and around, and follow the cliff there. Let's do that. Let's avoid these guys on the road. These strange bug men. We don't want anything to do with them. Not even a bit. Dog. Damn it. I hope they don't still have the problem where the dogs teleport around while attacking you. That would be annoying. Let's come up here, meet up with the brimstone. Oh no, maybe we'll go back. We'll just keep following this brimstone wall until we make our way to that fort. I want to know what's in there. Don't remember. Is there any sights of grace that way? No, it doesn't seem so. Grace. Well, I have an idea of where we are. We're going to head west before we go up to the fort. Try to avoid pissing off the strange fireman. And then, bada bing, bada boom. By the entrance is a site of grace. Grace. There's also a scarab here with... I don't remember what it has. Hmm. I don't remember what I usually do to take this thing out. There's a somewhat invisible scarab that can roll around through this area, and it's kind of difficult to hit it. It's a very specific kind of path, but it's going to roll around behind that branch, then make its way directly toward where I'm standing. So I'm going to try and stab it. <laughs> try a few times, and if that doesn't work, well, we'll try something else. You can usually tell when it's close by a sort of tingling noise. Ring-a-ding. Should be coming around right about now, so we're gonna try to get it relatively close. Yes, then stab it. And we get the Ash of War, Flame of the Red Maids. This is an Ash of War that has been nerfed a few times, but still holds its own versus many of the others in the game. It is insanely good at destroying enemy poise. But we're going to go ahead and ignore that direct path up into the fortress because, well, it's got that guy. I don't want to deal with that guy. So we're going to go from the side of Grace to the right, doing a bit of parkour up and around the edge. Come up and around here, jump off the horse and stab this guy. Pretty drop. Smoldering butterfly? I mean, okay, I guess. Well... Craft it up? Yeah, I got plenty of pots. Keep an eye out, because I think I'm starting to remember some of this place. There's a guy with a bow somewhere. 
but I want him dead. If this is the place I think it is, it might not be. Oh, there he is, off in the distance. Can you see him, bowman? We can avoid alerting things. Ooh, fire pot. Hey, I like those too. But I also like stabbing things. Are we going to ignore everyone else and come up around behind these guys, sneaking right up around here and pick a fight with the bowman? Hello, Mr. Bowman. Hello, Mr. Tallyman. Tally me banana. Firebomb. You're just gonna shoot from that range? Are you for real? Is this gonna hurt? Oh, barely. I can handle that. Oh, he does stamina damage. Oh my goodness. Okay. Be very picky. <laughs> if you block one attack, disengage. Like that. Block, then disengage. Block, disengage. Very simple. He does too much stamina damage to block entire combos. But there we go. He's dead and he dropped great arrows. Cool. Is that a horn? Oh no. That's a problem. Probably. Well, let's start clearing out as many as we can before the entire camp comes after us. Time to use these firebombs. Ooh, there's one behind me. Oh yeah. Sounds like there's... No, it's the music. Thought I heard footsteps behind me again. This is pretty manageable so far. This is where we use the firebombs. Oh, I missed. Of course I did. Try this guy. There we go, one down. Try again. Hey, stop just slightly retreating. Apparently it's enough to make my firebombs miss. Then there's the last one. What did you drop? Short spear. Neat, I guess. You've got a horn too, which means you have to die. Then there's still a guy to the left here. Take the rest of the camp area. He's dead. Smoldering butterfly. Let's grab the loot. Explosive great bolt. If I remember correctly, that's an item that you can only get a handful of throughout the game. I don't think you can craft them. At least I'm pretty sure. If we come around here to the right side. What do we have? A wall? There's the wall where we entered the area. Let's chug some Estus, just in case. I don't see any items this way. Creep around, turn the camera, take a peek. Yeah, it's just enemies, no items. Unless there's a chest under here. No. Nothing. So, let's go ahead and leave that entire area alone and start heading back toward the fort. I tried to stealth it, failed, and then just killed everybody. Try to enter in through the front gate. I think you can't do that. Now we have a stake of America here, so now we can afford to die. Since we can't go in through the front door, I do believe we have to go in through the side here. Yes. You walk over this little bit of bridge, fall off, and... Boom, you're here, doing here things. It's so one enemy by a ladder. Hardly imposing, you can just stagger him to death. And then, oh, whoa, whoa. One, two, two flame boys? Protecting, I don't know what that is, but I don't think I want anything that bad. Let's go ahead and climb up the ladder, see what we have. Oh, okay, I climbed up this ladder and that lion thing immediately figured out where I was. No one else is aggro, just him. I mean, works for me. Now we're gonna take out Soldier Boy right across this bridge. We stealth, surprisingly, he just won't notice us. And then hit him with a fully charged heavy. Ooh. Would have been better if I two-handed it so I wouldn't have bounced off his shield. Check the end of this. What is it? Warming stone. Ugh. I don't want to fall down there with that thing. Not until I'm sure that the rest of the enemies are dead. Could smash some barrels like a blink. Don't want these guys doing anything while I fight Lion Man. Should I? Oh, right. Let me craft my fire pots again. This is why we do it. Fire pot from here. Try another one. Is that shield gonna... Nope, doesn't block that much. Three fire pots and a dead man. Uh, I don't want to fight the knight and shield boy. So I think I'll wait it out. Does he see me or is he just posing? I think he's just posing menacingly. You, um, you want to go somewhere else, chief? I'd appreciate it. I really would. Any time now. Any, any, um, any time. You just... Is that your entire shtick? You just stand there? Oh, maybe I should use my summons. Skeletal Militiaman, a Jellyfish, Vanished Knight Oleg, who I can't actually summon. <laughs> well, okay. This is awkward. He won't go away. <laughs> I wonder if I can fight him without fighting the soldier. You know what? Let's grab some more fire pots. Then we'll summon the Lone Wolf Ashes. And now I'm gonna firebomb the shield boy. Here we go. Yep, three fire pots. We now know that that kills them. The wolves kept him off of me long enough to initiate this fight. Apparently they're capable of staggering him while I am not. <laughs> this is quite the gank that we have going on here. <laughs> it's just constant attacks. He didn't stand a chance. Oh, he did the glowy thing. Some enemies, stronger enemies like the giants for instance, when you kill them, 
Star Scourge Heirloom. We'll check that in a moment. Some enemies, when they're stronger, like the giants or that soldier that we just killed, will restore two flasks of Crimson Tears and the, the blue ones, the whatever those are called, Cerulean Tears. So you can afford to use healing items against them. Is there anything down here? Is there a reason why there's an undead man looking out to nothing? Guess not. Let's go up this way. Anything in this area? No. Oh, right. I just got an heirloom. What does it do? Star Scourge raises strength by five points. Ooh, five points. But I'll lose three points of carry weight, some health, and some stamina. Hmm. Actually kind of tempted. I'll wait until it means a bit more. Right now, we have the equivalent of 25 strength. Wait, 25? When I checked it last, I must have had the Flask of Wondrous Physics active. 25 strength. Which means we need more. A lot more. We need, like, almost 20 level ups? 19? Wait, at the top of this ladder, oh, hi dogs, just teleporting in. There's a portal here, and I don't know what it does. We'll check what it does after we go and kill Catman Thing. It's down this way. A lot of nothing. Oh, there's an item right there. I guess there's a little bit more to be done in this fort. Let's not teleport away just yet. Jump over across here. See what's down this way to the right. The hidden goods? It's a mushroom. Ten mushrooms. Oh, now that was worth it. Oh, my dogs are picking a fight with Catman Thing. Anything under these barrels? No. What about down here? Mm, nah. Let's check across this way. Is that a lever? Hold a lever, Kronk. Probably opens up the front gate. I'm assuming. I am indeed. Assuming. Let's drop down over this way and see what's up. No fall damage. Good. This, oh, this brings me to the entrance. Well, time to fight Catman Thing. I guess I'll take my flask. My dogs are dead. Very dead. What is this? Runark? Cool. Ouch. Guess I'll just handle it the same way I did the other one. Attack when he attacks. Come on, buddy. Close the gap. This is very manageable. Doesn't take that much stamina per attack. He only attacks like once or twice in a row. This doesn't seem to be any kind of like three hit combos. Oh, maybe that one. That's pretty slow. Very manageable. As long as you keep your guard up, manage your stamina properly, this is all completely doable. And I'm sure we could take quite a few hits with all the Estus that we have. I don't know why, I just let go of my guard there for a moment. He suffers from the same problem that most- oh, my health is low. Let's go ahead and block a few attacks. Two, three, okay, let's get a big flashy attack. Okay, chug some Estus. Take two of them. Except the fact that I'll take one hit, then get back to murder. Oh, Ash of War Lion's Claw. Lion's Claw. Oh, that's the overhead slam. What is that? Why is there a health bar down there? Weird. Well, Catman Thing is dead. Now I have to make my way back up to that portal. So let's head up this ladder. We've gotten two Ashes of War. Pretty good. Let's go jump across this way, if we can time it. Yeah, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. I almost just ran off of this platform here. Oh, there is a spell or something. There is an item down by the fire dudes in the corner there. You know what? I'm not interested. I'm pretty sure it's a spell, so I'll pass. Let's go back up the ladder and see what this uh, portal does. I'm curious. Is it portal flavor? Oh, see Daisy. Yeah, so I was deceived by my flask of wondrous physic. I only have 25 strength at the base. Which means we need 19 levels to use the Visage Shield. Or 14 if we use the accessory that we just got that raises strength. It's gonna take time. Kaelid. We... Where are we? Where am I? I see a bridge. Okay. Where... Where am I? Really? Okay, we have a portal here. Oh, we got brought to the front of Radon's castle thing. It's quite the distance to just drop somebody into. Um, well, I'm gonna go backwards across this bridge because there's a site of grace back this way. We might get hit by a catapult or two. I've never ran the opposite direction across the bridge. Ouch, ouch. Chug, get on horse. Oh yeah, just barely dodged it. Just gotta bob and weave. <laughs> bob and weave. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been hit by one of those before. Oh, good God. Okay, keep going. Bob and weave, bob and weave, and touch grass. Am I still going to get hit from over here? No. Since we're here, I guess I'll go up this tower. Anything in these tents? No. In that case, up we go. I can hear crossbows going off, but I'm not sure I'm interested. Oh, they're going off at me. I see. I think the best way to handle this is simple sword and board. Yeah, works for me. 
stabbing aggressively. Oopsie daisy. Oh, those also gave me the two flask thing. We have but the one guy. No, two dudes. What's up, bro? I have a fireball. A fireball, bro? Stabby, stabby, stab. Yeah, we have more than enough health and other stuff to just handle this. You're gonna just strafe? Is that, oh, here we go. That's better. Gotta love those bleed brocks. Before we head up the ladder, off to the right here is a chest. Arrows sting talisman. Now what that does, sort of synergetic, and with the arrows reach talisman, it raises the power of arrows and bolts, making them do more damage. So if you're a big fan of the pew pew, why is there a ladder up to nothing here? What is the purpose? Why, why am I fish shaped? My mustache goes up through my nose. Well, let's fast travel to not here because this is Deathland and I don't want to die yet. We are going to fast travel back to the very first grace here, the Rot View Balcony. And we're going to head straight south, sort of straight. It's not, it's not completely a straight line actually. What is inside this shack? I'm curious, struggling to steer this thing, preserving boluses. Keep heading south, parkour our way up above some rocks. Pass through this graveyard, collecting all the loot. Three golden runes, stackable XP. And then continue cell. So you reach a cliff here, which we're going to fall off of onto this platform. And then fall off of again, down in front of this cave entrance. Dismount our dog, and enter the Gale Tunnel. There will be two soldiers in here, one to the left and one to the right. And I think... We're just going to firebomb the one on the right. Because it's what we do. Two firebombs will kill him. And that, this, guy just did, this guy just didn't even notice. Let's just sneak up across this wall and give him a nice little heavy attack. Like this. Yeah. Is that nice, buddy? Did that feel good? Oh, I got a brass shield. Eight. Now I can dual wield. Now there's no lift to this area, so we're going to be coming to the left here and walking off. And then doing it again. Just keep following the wall, keeping it to your left. Little cave in here, a somber smithing stone too. Gonna wanna run and jump against the wall here, but land on this platform. Do it again over this way, and the final drop right here. Oh, this is that guy we just killed. Whoopsie. Gonna craft up the rest of my fire pots. Always good to have them. And now touch grass inside a cave. We have a batch of souls, and we don't wanna just let them disappear if we accidentally die, so time to level up. Oh dear. 19 levels into strength will leave us with a lot less health than we want, but the shield is massive in more ways than one. I think our goal will be to invest the next 14 levels into strength. It's a little counterintuitive because vigor is far more important, but I want that shield. That visage shield is truly good. It's the good stuff. And partway through we'll be able to upgrade to the manor tower shield as well. We're almost there already. Four levels and we can upgrade to this. We are going to have to start putting on lighter armor to make do. But that's fine. Small price to pay. Because having a 75 guard boost is godlike. Compared to our current one, it's 50% less stamina damage. And then we can upgrade it using, I think, somber. Smithing stones is what this requires. Every two levels invested in the visage shield will upgrade it by one guard boost. They can get 10. So we can get it up to a 80% stamina reduction or guard boost but this has been episode 8 of the elden ring series thank you all for watching i hope you have a wonderful day i will see you in the next episode but for now goodbye